Welcome to Unleash Your Courage. This is your host, Angela Schroeder. Excited to have you joining us, whether you're joining us live on Turf Step Radio, in our Facebook group, or listening by recording. And we are so excited to have Marvin joining with us today. Welcome, Marvin. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. So I've gotten to know Marvin more over the last few months in this home service space, and he has been on my guest lineup for a while because it's a special treat um, for Turf Step Radio with all of his experience in the lawn and landscape space. So Marvin, why don't you tell the audience just a little bit about you? All right. Uh, So uh, I'm from a little town called Tyler, Texas. Uh, it's It's in East Texas, which is the pretty side of Texas with all the grass and trees. Um, my, uh, my primary company, I own a landscaping business and, uh, I started it a little over six years ago. Uh, before that I was a part of another multimillion dollar landscape company, but through a series of unfortunate events, um, me and my business partner weren't getting along and I left that company. I signed everything over to him and I started over, uh, in October, 2016. Uh, since October 2016 until uh, the end of 2022, uh, we built the business up from virtually nothing to uh, the end of 2022. We closed out right at $5 million in sales. And uh, it actually was announced yesterday we made the Inc. 5000 fastest growing privately held companies in America list for the second year in a row. Um. On top of that, that didn't keep me busy enough. I went out and I bought a mechanic shop last year. Uh, We did about a million in sales with the mechanic shop. Uh, Then about six months ago, we took over a uh, hot rod restoration company where we we restore classic hot rods from the ground up. Uh, I also have a, a small real estate company. And then I'm right now in the process of... Uh, taking over four other companies. Uh, I've got an HVAC company, a garage door company, a um, a house cleaning company, and a uh, home remodel company that we're in the process of taking over. And uh, and then uh, I also do business coaching. And uh, so, yeah, and just loving life, loving life. Goodness. Every time I hear your story, obviously it changes because you're acquiring more businesses, which is fun to hear. So every time I hear you share your story, one, there's some pickups and changes on that based on you know new businesses that you're acquiring. And I'm always amazed um, at the fun diversification, diversification across the industries. But I pick up a little more of you know your original story each yes, ma'am. time. So... And I love that you shared in the beginning. It's not, you know, it's, it's not all roses from the beginning. (laughs) No, definitely not. Definitely. And, and, but out of that, um, what you've grown in such an exciting time that you have, you know, going on in your business and in your life right now. Yes, ma'am. I, uh, I constantly strive to, to push forward uh, I refuse to be mediocre. I think mediocrity uh, is is not acceptable in my life. And uh, so I constantly strive to push myself and my business forward a little bit every day. Um, you know, I'm a, a big proponent of constantly moving that needle. And mm. uh, I, I tell the people that I coach all the time, I tell them, I said, if you show up and you do something on purpose with a purpose every single day, you may not move that needle a lot, but you're going to move it incrementally every single day. And then you're going to be able to look back and see how far that you have come simply because you move that needle a little bit every day. Mm, I love it. Those are two really great nuggets of concentrating on, you know, how can I move the needle just a little bit each day? each and every day. And if you do something on purpose with a purpose, so that's back, yes. to, uh, you know, like intentional activity, but also the intention behind it. Yes. Uh, you know, that's such a huge thing. That's a, that's a white border sticky note um, on the office type statement. If you do something on purpose with a purpose every day. 
Yes, absolutely. And how much of your activity um, is that each day? I think we can always be a major, you know, that how much you move that needle um, is determined by how many of your activities I think are on purpose with a purpose. Yes. I'm taking that as your nugget, Marvin. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Well, we have some people chiming in on Facebook. If you are joining us on Facebook, be sure to register with StreamYard so we can see your name. Sean Day is in the house. Oh, yay. He thinks we both rock. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> and yes, Inc. 5000 is huge. Congratulations, Marvin. I just saw Thank that on you. Facebook. So Thank that is you. Um, so like I said, I could dive into so many nuggets of your story and I'm fascinated by it each time. So many different fun businesses. Yes, so ma'am. The newest ones again. I mean, some of these I hadn't heard about. So um, we're actually announcing today, and I'm kind of spilling the beans because it hasn't been officially announced yet. Uh, I think it's hitting in about an hour or so. Uh, but we're we're changing the name of our company. Um, we're no longer going to be Salcedo Lawn. Uh, we're changing it to Salcedo Home Solutions uh, so that we can be your solution for all your home service needs. And uh, so I've got an HVAC company. Uh, we're stepping out into the, the home uh, air heating and air world. Um, I've got a garage door uh, repair and installation company, as well as uh, we're now going to be providing um, housekeeping um, you know, homemade service, um, and then home remodeling, um, you know, handyman type work and, and, and full remodels that we're going to be able to come in and, uh, make your dreams a reality in your home. So, ah. and then as I acquire more businesses, we'll be rolling those out as new services as well. Awesome. So this is just the beginning. Plan to- just the beginning. I like make all your dreams come true in your home. So yes. before we dive into like what those different businesses are like, and congratulations, I'm excited that we Thank got you. to be part of announcing the new name, like the preview to announcing your new company name. Thank That's you. Exciting. Thank you. Um, let's, because we do have lots of listeners um, on Turfs Up in the lawn and landscape <clears throat> and that's where you got your beginning. So why don't you it talk is. a little bit more about that, that industry, your experiences in the beginning? All right. So I started God, 25, 30 years ago uh, when I was a teenager. Uh, I started mowing yards for neighborhood, uh, you know, neighborhood families. And, uh, you know, that's kind of where I got my feet wet. But where I really got started was in college. And uh, I remember calling my dad up one day. And uh, I was working a job. I was a janitor at a church and uh, I wasn't making a ton. I was making eight bucks an hour or something like that. Uh, I actually had decent benefits, but um, wasn't making a ton of money. And I told him, I said, dad, um, this, this ain't cutting it. I said, I I can't pay all my bills. Um, You know, I I need to, I need to make some more money. And uh, do you have any ideas? And he said, ah, let me think about it for a little bit, and I'll call you back. He called me back about an hour later. He said, go do what you know how to do. He said, go mow yards. And he, he told me he had helped me buy my first mower and everything. And then, I, you know, of course, I pay him back. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what I did. I bought a push mower, a weed eater, a blower, printed up some really, really crappy flyers, and uh, started knocking on houses. <laughs> And passing out flyers. And that's how I got started. Um, And I just started mowing yard and then, you know, started growing my route. And uh, as it grew and I had to buy a little bit better mower. And uh, it was amazing because, you know, I I push mowed everything at first. Huge, huge, like uh, one acre lots I'm pushing with the push mower. And it's taken me like four hours to do one property. And, uh, And then I went and I bought a, a little bit better mower and I cut my time in half. Um, And then I went and I bought a commercial mower, my very first commercial mower. And I cut that time in half again. So I went from four hours to one hour uh, on these properties. And so I increased my bandwidth just by getting better equipment. And then I, so I was able to stack more properties in and grow 
grow my business. And of course that met my needs and I was able to pay my bills and uh, worked out really, really, really well and grew that business for a year or so and uh, or two years, maybe. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Um, and then I ended up moving to Tyler where I live now because I sold that business and moved to Tyler and started over. I moved here in uh, June of 2003. And uh, I think I moved here on June 3rd, if I remember correctly. And uh, that following Monday, I immediately hit the, hit the bricks. I started knocking on doors and passing out flyers and uh, I started my business. I mean, within two or three days of being in town, uh, I started up and, and grew my business and just kept growing and growing and, you know, filled out my route and hired a helper and then filled that out, hired another helper and built it out, split into two trucks and then built and I just copy paste, copy paste. And, uh, you know, all the way up until the point that I merged with another company and then we grew really fast. Um, we were, uh, when we merged, I, I was doing about a million a year in sales and he was doing about mm, 25, maybe 250,000. And then we went from 1 million to 2 million to 3 million in consecutive years. And, um, it was, it was fun and, uh, hard to keep up with the, the, the growth and having to build out systems and processes and figure crap out as we went. Um, and then, you know, of course I ended up walking away from that company in October, 2016. And, um, and then I had to start all over again. And I tell you, it was devastating. Um, I remember sitting down and talking with my wife. Uh, and, and for those of you who don't know my story, you know, I'm, I'm, I almost lost my wife in September of uh, 2016. Uh, she almost died during childbirth of our third baby and um, crazy, crazy story. She ended up making a full recovery. She's fine today. Um, baby's fine. Everybody's healthy. But uh, I remember sitting down with her as I was exiting the other company and starting over. And I, I sat her down and I told her, I said, babe, I said, I need you. I know, I know you've been with me through the thick and the thin and you, you've always had my back. I said, but I need three more years. I said, it's going to suck for the next three years, you know, because we, we had had a, a decent income and then I had to walk away from that and start over. And uh, I went from making six figures a year to making like 40,000 a year. And, uh, and I told her, I said, babe, the next three years are really going to suck. I said, but give me three years and I'll make it happen. And she told me, she said, you've said that before. Uh, you know, you, you, I told her, I said, I'm going to have to work you know, 80, 80 hours, hundred hours a week to get this off the ground. Cause I, I need to hit the ground running. She's like, you've said that. And I said, I know, and it's not fair to you and I'm sorry, but bear with me. Give me three years, continue down this road with me. And I promise you I'll make it happen. And I did, I got in there and I, hustled and I made, I passed out flyers and I knocked doors. I did door to door sales um, and Facebook ads and Facebook videos and Google and uh, you name it. I did it. Uh, went out there and we painted our trucks lime green so they would stand out. And, you know, I did tons and tons of content marketing and brand marketing and, and just really, I, what I tell people is I forced our way into the market um, because a lot of people, you know, they, they do advertising, but they, they remind me of uh, a really soft spoken person. They're like, excuse me, excuse me. You know, they're trying to tell people about their brand or what they do. And they're like, excuse me. I'm like, Heck no, I'm like busting in the doors. And, and you know, because I wanted, I, I had three goals when I started over. Uh, one, I needed to recoup my income as fast as possible. Uh, and two, I, I wanted to become a household name. Uh, and then three, I needed to, to create some time for myself. I wanted to be able to step back and, mm -hmm. and recoup my time. 
And, uh, and so I, that's, that's exactly what I did. I mean, I, I forced my way into the market. Matter of fact, I had somebody, uh, another landscaper stop me one day, uh, at a home Depot and he just, he looked at me and never seen this guy before. And this is how he introduced himself to me. He's like, dude, what the hell? And I'm like, <laughs> excuse me. And he's like, Oh no, no, no. He's like, no, he's like, how'd you grow so fast? And, I, and then he introduced himself. He kind of did it all backwards, but he's like, man, I've been watching you. And like, you have grown crazy fast. And uh, I sat there and I talked with him for, you know, 30 minutes or so. And I just told him, I was like, look, I just did what everybody should be doing. And I'm advertising and I'm doing a, a lot of advertising. And I'm letting people know that I'm here. I said, because if people don't know you exist, how are they going to call you? If people don't know who to call you, they're not going to call you. They're not going to pick up the phone and just conjure up your phone number and, you know, call the, the next painting company or lawn maintenance or, you know, whatever company you are. They, they can't just hope they dial the right number. They have to know about you. And that's what I did is I forced my way into the market and I told people who I was. And to the point that now we're, we're pretty much a household name here in town. And, uh, and, and then, you know, within just a matter of years, I was able to recoup my time to where I was no longer working 80 to hundred hours a week. And I started putting systems and processes in place for myself so that I didn't have to work all that time. And I was able to step back and, and focus on the business and work on the business rather than working in the business. And, uh, you know, I, I put, uh, you know, structure in place for myself that I started going home like at five or six o'clock at the latest. I no longer worked all night long. I no longer got up at the butt crack of dawn every day. Uh, I don't work on the weekends. You know, I put, uh, put things in place to make it very difficult for myself. I used to leave my computer at work uh, so that if I wanted to work on something, I had to get up drive across town, get on my computer and then work. I, I did okay. not make it convenient for myself to do stuff. And, uh, I and I was Marvin of, of that brand awareness, like you said, just exploding in the market. to now that you're a household name, um, I want to go more into that and then how you changed into processes, but we need to yeah. take our first commercial break and then we'll All be right. right back. Have you considered artificial turf? It's great for areas with high precipitation, which means no mud after a heavy rain and no more mowing wet grass. Today's artificial turf is made using recycled materials and helps to reduce water consumption in areas of drought. Turf Envy's artificial turf is constructed of quality raw materials, safe for pets, humans, and our environment. With decades of experience, our staff can help with support, training, and product education to give you confidence when estimating a project for a potential customer. Learn more at TurfNVUSA.com today. You're listening to Turfs Up Radio, the only radio station of its kind dedicated to the green industry. Turfs Up Radio, your industry, your station. Hey everybody, Wayne Vols, The Prophet, your host of Profit Time here on Turfs Up Radio. If you listen to my show, you know I'm all about profit. As an industry, profit is something we fail to meet most of the time. If you're working hard but not seeing the results that you deserve, Profits Unlimited is here to help. We offer processes and systems designed specifically to make your company more successful, more profitable, and certainly more efficient. When you're ready to take your company to the next level, reach out to me at Profits Are us.com that's profits a r e u s.com and don't forget to turn into profit time ever monday wednesday and friday at 10 a.m are you a military family with a spouse on deployment away from home did you know that nonprofit project evergreen has thousands of volunteers across the country ready to help military families with lawn landscape and snow removal services we call it green care and snow care for troops if you are a military family and would like to receive this free service, or if you'd like to volunteer to help, visit projectevergreen.org. Project Evergreen, creating a greener, healthier, cooler earth, one yard at a time. 
Busy work burning you out? Kick it to the curb and do more of what you love. How? With Landscape Management Network to spend less time creating estimates, tracking crews, doing job costing, managing invoices and payroll, and more. FYI, the average LMN contractor spends 50% less time doing payroll, increases profits, and lands more jobs. Put an end to burnout. Visit golmn.com slash turfsup. That's golmn.com forward slash turfsup to get started. Have you considered artificial? And we're back. And I fixed the camera in the meantime. All right. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think it's um, the past few days. I am settled in a new office and uh, trying to get the technology right each time is a challenge. Like, I think I have all the plugins right. And it's just set up slightly different that I somehow mess it up each time. But <laughs> technology is always fun. Okay. So, Marvin. Um, Love. So many people can learn from, I want to dive into so many parts of that, back into how you stepped away, um, you know, and created processes and got yourself back out of the business and the brand awareness. But um, I love when you, you know, talked about how tough it was to go to your wife and say, um, you know, I have to dive back in. I have to do this again. Like I had been at this place and she's like, I heard that before you said that before. But we were out of it. And, yeah. Um, we've shared, like, I've been in a similar circumstance in my business journey of deciding to completely walk away. And, and mine was partly for personal reasons. <clears throat> I know you made a decision to walk away because that's what was better for you. You can stay and fight and figure it out or just the energy of, you know, clean walking away and what comes from that. Yeah. Um, but it's hard. It was hard for me to tell my kids of like, yeah, I, I did build the empire once. And I'm going to have to go back in and do everything just as hard to do it again. Um, second time, I'm sure not only in that. But yeah. you know, there's some beauty in doing it all over again. And you know, the shortcuts to take the second time around. Yep. It's, it's like, you know, I'm going to show my age here. Uh, back when, uh, you, you know, on Nintendo 64 and in, in your uh, play, Super, Super Mario and uh, in your, uh, your, you know, you're playing, you know, running through the routes and uh, you know that you can jump through this brick wall and, and or take the secret tunnel and, you know, you figured it out the first time. It took forever. But then the, the 15th, 20th, 30th, 50th time, you're running through there with your eyes closed. That's what happens with business is you're able to run through and take all these shortcuts. And you, you, you know, oh, this advertising work, this doesn't. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. This is where we found the best workers. And you're able to shortcut. And, you know, the second time around, uh, well, actually, it's my fifth business or something. But... I was able to grow so much faster because I knew what to do and more importantly, what not to do to help me grow. Mm. I love that. It is that you're starting over, uh, you know, financially, but you're not starting over from scratch. You're starting over yeah. from that wisdom. I've never thought that that is a great analogy, the Super Mario Brothers of, you know, that you're, you're able to, to see the obstacles coming, to know the shortcuts, and yeah. do it faster. And you've certainly proved that not only in starting from zero from this, and now you're not starting from zero anymore, but the ability to uh, transition and build so many horizontal businesses quickly. Yes. So that's um, been fun. Um, branching out into other service offerings and, and uh, you know, other verticals to, uh, complement my main company. And that's one of the reasons why I went and I bought the mechanic shop is so that we could service our own vehicles. Um, you know, I, I, I looked at how much I spent in 2021 and I had spent a, a quarter of a million dollars in repairs in 2021. And then the, when this mechanic shop came up uh, for sale, 
it was one of the shops we were already using. We were farming our equipment out to about or trucks to two or three different shops. And uh, when this one came up, I got to running the numbers on it. And if I was my only customer, it made sense for me to buy this place. And, uh, you know, we're open to the public. And so we're able to, you know, sell to a lot of people. But if I was my only customer, it made sense. And so that's why I bought the mechanic shop because I'm able to fix my stuff. And if I need it in a rush, I can push my stuff to the front of the line. (laughs) Um, you know, so this is, so there's some beauty there. And then, you know, we're able to, you know, we're starting the other service offerings with the, uh, the HVAC and the, uh, home cleaning and the garage doors. And what it's going to do is we're going to be in these people's houses that many more times. And we'll be, you know, we, when, when we're mowing and we can look up and be like, ah, oh, the garage door's falling apart. Would you like for, would you like a free quote from our garage door division? And we can send them over a quote or we're doing electrical work for them or which I don't have an electrical division yet, but I'm trying, I'm working yes. on, uh, I'm working yes. on electrical and plumbing and, uh, but, you know, it, we're able to cross sell amongst all these divisions and um, and it's it creates a beautiful vertical for the company as a whole. Yeah, I love that. Like you said, you're already in their house and being able to recognize those things. Just a curious. We have Dan Plata saying hi. Hey, what's up, Dan? Dad and I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, goodness. I can't even harass him later. We're on a little break from his, his show. Can't even throw that oh. back in his face. <laughs> um, but just curious, you said division. So as you acquire these other businesses, yes. are they separate businesses with their own identity, logos, things like that? Or are you putting them under one roof with divisions? My my goal is, is that it's just going to be another division of Salsuto Home Solutions. Uh, Because as you create more uh, or separate companies and and don't get me wrong, some of, some of these divisions will have additional owners and uh, the, but my portion of it will be owned by the company by, you know, the, the mother company, and it'll be a subsidiary of Salcedo. And then, um, but Lord, where was I going with that? Um, oh, the yes. yeah, the division. Um, so the beauty of having just one brand versus 15 or 20 different brands, it is a marketing nightmare to be able to push that many different brands and that many logos yep. and that many websites. And, um, and now I'm able to take uh, all of that advertising and funnel it down and, um, you know, laser focus it with Salcedo Home Solutions versus throw some marketing dollars here and some over here and some over here. It just, it simplifies our life and, and helps us to be a little bit more laser focused with what we're doing. Yeah. That, and which falls right in line with what you did with the company, right? Creating that household name and brand awareness. And because you've done that so much and done that so well, that makes perfect sense that you want to, you know, use that that brand and marketing power that you worked so hard to get. And capitalize to, on it. Yeah. Capitalize on that instead of the different things. It's an yeah. interest fertilizer and irrigation. Um but Christmas lights, snow removal, things that people often added on, very commonly added on, were divisions. Where I have seen now, as so my home was only in the lawn and landscape space for so long, um, but as I've branched out and seen, and we both have you know friends in this diverse um, home services space, there are a lot of the other companies that do completely separate businesses to be the expert in that business, to be a Mm -hmm. holiday, you know, a holiday lighting expert in the business um, or a washing, be the expert um, at that. And so there are different businesses that do separate marketing, have separate brands, 
and so it's an interesting perspective. Interesting perspective, yeah, on on which works and um, why it works for people. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. There, there is, uh, there's a whole strategy by having separate brands, and it makes it easier when you go to sell if you want to just sell the landscaping division or just sell. You know, I get that. I'm not necessarily looking to sell. I'm looking to grow my empire. (laughs) And, uh, you know, as it grows and uh, eventually it's just going to spit off profit one day. And I can, at that point, just enjoy the fruits of my labor. Or if somebody comes along and they're interested in the whole kit and caboodle and they write a big enough check, I'll sell it to them. (laughs) There you go. I love it. Well, I love how you have built all these, um, you know, you're going to become a superpower in the industry in your area. Of, um, you know, you said building an, an empire, but really everyone's solution in your area for everything in the home. And it sounds like the businesses that you don't have, the divisions that you don't already have lined up, it's a thought in your head. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm wanting to uh, be, be a superpower in all home services for our market. And, you know, I've, I've had people, you know, why don't you franchise out or why don't you, you know, why not maximize what I've got right here? And I, I, there's so much untapped potential right here Mm -hmm. and I'm going to maximize that before I ever even consider franchising or licensing or branching out into another market. I'm going to capitalize on, I'm going to squeeze every penny out of what I've got right here. I love it. Like do, do what you have built, capitalize on, you know, the name that you have, the empire that you've already built and capitalize on every last opportunity you have in that area for the work that you've already done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to take one last commercial break and come back for our last segment. So we'll be right back. All right. True Fuel is a high octane fuel precision engineered for your two and four cycle equipment. They use the most advanced synthetic lubricants and stabilizers in an ethanol free fuel, improving performance, protecting your equipment, and saving you time. That means easier startups, smoother idling, and quicker trigger response, plus extended life for all of your equipment. True Fuel is ready to use and easy to store, helping your operations be more efficient and reducing maintenance costs. We at Turfs Up use True Fuel because we know it works and we know it's the best option. Check out TrueFuel50.com to learn more. That's T R U F U E L 50.com. You're listening to Turfs Up Radio, the only radio station of its kind dedicated to the green industry. Now you can even ask Alexa to tune you in when you're home. Are outdated spreadsheets and whiteboard scheduling costing you jobs? Or is a lack of consistency between crews causing your bids to differ from job to job? Or worse, delaying critical invoices and payments? Crew Control offers all-in-one business management solutions fit for every trade. From bidding and scheduling to invoicing and integrating payments, Crew Control provides real-time visibility into your crew's efficiency, whether you're in the field, in the office, or even on vacation. Manage your crews more effectively and improve business performance with Crew Control. Start your free trial today at CrewControl.com. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world, here's to all the women in the green industry. Turfs Up Radio, your industry, your station. True Fuel is a high-octane fuel precision engineered for your two- and four-cycle equipment. They use the most advanced synthetic lubricants and stabilizers in an ethanol-free fuel, improving performance, protecting your equipment, and saving you time. That means easier startups, smoother idling, and quicker trigger response, plus extended life for all of your equipment. True Fuel is ready to use and easy to store, helping your operations be more efficient and reducing maintenance costs. We at Turfs Up use True Fuel because we know it works and we know it's the best option. Check out TrueFuel50.com to learn more. That's T R U F U E L 50.com. 
You're listening to Turf Up Radio, the only radio station of its kind dedicated to the green industry. Now you can even ask Alexa to tune you in when you're home. And we are back for our last segment. Um, so Marvin, it has been um, so awesome, like I said, listening to your story. I've heard it before, but um, that all the new things coming up and like you becoming this superpower um, force in the in the air, you know, in your um, area. I, I just love that. I want to go back to the processes and how you got yourself out of the business, how there was a time for the grind and there was then a time to intentionally step away, take your time back, work on the business, not in the business. So this is what I did and this is what I suggest for people to do is start small. Uh, Don't try and jump in. I mean, if you're working 68 hours a week, don't just say, all right, starting today, I'm no longer working past five o'clock. Uh, I'm only working nine to five and no weekends. Well, if you don't set things up properly, you are setting yourself up for failure and your, your business will grind to a halt. So start with Friday afternoons, go home at five. And then once you do that consistently, work in a Wednesday, then a month, then you start doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then you start five days a week. And, and then you start taking out the weekends, you know, don't work on Sundays, don't work mm-hmm. on Saturdays or just half a day on Saturday. And then, you know, and then you just, you start slowly and work your way up. And, um, that's, that's exactly what I did. Uh, and then I, I started reclaiming my life and, you know, so that I was home. And when I was home, I was actually home that I wasn't sitting on the couch working on my computer until midnight. And, you know, if my kids want to play or they want to talk to me or whatever, I can actually focus on them and pay attention. And, um, yeah, granted, I still have days where I'm exhausted and I fall asleep on the couch and, you know, I'm human, but I'm home and I'm not working and I can focus on my kids. Like last night we were all sitting around the dinner table and just talking and telling jokes and just having a riot. I mean, we were laughing so hard. And, uh, I, (laughs) the other day, I told my son, <laughs> I told my son, uh, we, I said, we, I said a joke and we were all laughing. And then I told him, I said, man, I am the funniest guy I know. And then he just kind of looked at me and he said, hmm, I must know more people than you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I lost it. I lost it. It was amazing. <laughs> but we have, we're able to have that kind of relationship. You know, I'm not, I'm not this, you know, random guy that just comes home late at night and Mm -hmm. that's it. You know, I'm able to be a dad to him and, uh, and then we're able to go on vacation and, you know, cause by nature, I'm a workaholic. I absolutely love working. Like I really enjoy working and, uh, but it's, it's not healthy for my, for my relationship with my kids and my relationship with my wife. And so I had to put processes in place to make it very, very difficult for myself to be able to work when I'm not supposed to be working. And then as I grew and I needed to offload things off of my plate, I found the right people to bring alongside me because you know what? I am the first one to know, Uh, you know, I'm smart enough to know I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but I know how to hire the smartest guy in the room. And that's what I've done is I've brought some really amazing people alongside me that I'm able to offload things off of my plate. And what I started with is the stuff I hated doing. Um, You know, the stuff that really bogged my mind down and I dreaded doing, those were my first, uh, first hires in the business. Mm. Um, You know, I hated doing office work. So I fired, I hired somebody to do all the office stuff. And then I got to the point to where I really didn't, have time or to have the capacity 
to go and meet with the crews every day and run that side of the business. So I found somebody to run that side of the business for me. And then it allowed me to focus on growing the business rather than doing all the ins and outs every single day. And then as I grew that and I offloaded stuff off of my plate, it got to the point to where the highlight of my week was checking the mail. And I was like, God, this is boring. And then I went out and I bought another business. (laughs) (laughs) I just started all Uh, over again. Entrepreneur, you're like, well, I offloaded so many things that I'm bored, and I need, uh, I need something else to do. Exactly what I did, <laughs> and and now it's just. But now the beauty of it is, is so like over with Salcedo Home Solutions, we now have the systems and processes in place that when we bring a new division in, it's simple, it's copy paste. These people are just coming to work with us. And it's just another division. It's no different than lawn maintenance. It's no different than bed maintenance. It's house cleaning. Yeah, it's a different widget, but the process is the same. That's all it I is. That. It's a different I've widget. That processes, playbooks, so streamlined that it just carries over. And so that's kind of what we talked about earlier. It's much easier for you as you bring on a business to just fit into the mold and, and model and process that you already have. Yeah, uh, you've hit on some great things in in that offloading process and why it's important. Um, one one thing we talk about a lot is if, uh, you know avoiding that burnout and how as an entrepreneur, um, how you can spend time working in your unique genius and offload the rest, offload what the areas aren't the things that you don't do best, the things that you don't love to do. And don't get you closer to your mission and vision. And you identified that right away. Like the first thing I'm getting rid of is the things I don't like to do. So those yeah. are going out the window first. And how important that is for your own mental health and burnout. No matter right. what, if you're a workaholic and, and love your business and love working in it, if you do things that you don't love to do for too long, you're going to hate your business and your life. Yeah. And... Yeah. You know, recognizing that, having the awareness, getting rid of those things first. And it's different for everyone um, what those things are. And then secondly, um, the right people, I guess there's all kinds of them, right people, finding the right people, the the smart people, getting them in your organization is important. And then I love your awareness of that, that you're a workaholic. Many of us are. And having to create a system to take care of yourself, to be there and have the energy to be present for the people in your life. Like you've actually not just made a decision that I'm going to do it. You've created a system so that you have to, to like trick yourself. Yes, absolutely. And, and if I, what I do is I, I make rules for myself and I'm a rule follower. I, I, I know I am by nature. And if I tell myself, this is the law, this is the rule then that's what I'm going to do. Like, you can't change this. You have to go home. You have to be at home. You have to be available for your family. That's what I do. And I don't, I don't let anybody change that. And I tell you a little trick that I learned is put it in your calendar, put it in your calendar at five o'clock, go home. And then when somebody tries to make an appointment with you, you can, you can truly go, ah, I already have an appointment at that time, but I can meet with you tomorrow at three. I love it. You're not lying. It is an appointment and it's in your calendar. It's an appointment. I can't change. I'm sorry. I've, I've already got my matter of fact, I'm booked up the rest of the week after five, but I can meet with you any day before five. Mm. I love that um, you have, like I said, created that system of putting the people in your life first. And so often we give our leftover energy to the people that are most important. And you have carved out a way in a system to make sure that you are giving them not leftover energy, but that they are the most important appointment on your calendar. I got to be nice to my kids now because they're going to decide what, what nursing home I go into later. So I want them to like me. <laughs> I might have already ruined that myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
in it. That's some good advice. Hopefully they're not listening to this episode or and I oh, saw Oh no, my kids yeah. love me. They're great. <laughs> well, we always end the episode. Time goes so fast with you, Marvin, that um I will get to see you next week, right? At the Yes, huge. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So we'll get to spend some great time together um next week. And I'm looking forward to that. At the end of each episode, and I didn't give you a prequel to this. We were rushed at the beginning, and I was like, oh, just have a good time. Um, but we ask, ask the viewers each week um, a challenge of what's one thing that you need to do to get uncomfortable. And so we start mm. with each of us so that you have it. Usually we start with you and then me, but so that you have uh, a week just so that you have a second to think about what you want to do. I will go first. All right. And you can go of one thing that you're going to do to get uncomfortable. Um, last week, and I have done it, I said that I was going to do daily stories and get on social media more and put myself out there and, and be more vulnerable. And I'm going to extend that one um, as I go in because I have, but I've still been very prepped in those stories on social media. And I'm not as great as JC as at just like in, in the moment in life. So I'm going to continue to be uh, more vulnerable. We're going to be doing some more lives and just show people more vulnerable moments instead of pre-messaging, I guess. All right. So, to learn well, to be authentic. I will somewhat piggyback on that. And I have been procrastinating, um, making some more uh, TikToks, not not for fun, but to to help people, and I, I've always found it a challenge to come up with ideas to talk about. Once mm. somebody gives me a subject, I can talk about something all day long. Matter of fact, I can make stuff up, and you will think I I knew exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> I, I'm really good at BS, and, but. Um, <laughs> No, just uh, I would say putting out some good content out there on, on social media for, for other people. Consistent awesome. content. Well, we put that out there to the world, so they're going to see uh, that we do it. And audience, that's your challenge for the week. We know that growth happens outside of our comfort zone. So what's one thing that you're going to do to get uncomfortable? Marvin, thank you so much for hanging thank out with me today. Me. Uh, absolutely. It's been a privilege and I can't wait to um, hang out with you in person next week. Yes, Thank you guests for joining us on Turf Up Radio, Facebook, or by recording. Don't forget to continue to like, download, and subscribe. We'll see you next Wednesday. Bye. <laughs>